Okay guys, welcome back to our vlog. Obviously I'm not in camera shot at the moment because I've got to press the record button in the back of this camera. Uh, I've got my D3100 which is my kind of entry level camera for my wife. Uh, so you can probably see my kind of my bare feet my legs soon. Right, we've got 10 minutes recording time on this. Oh. So I'm going to talk about the bags. Uh, and essentially photography bags. Now, when I started doing photography, I think I bought the first bag I bought was a low pro bag and it was like a little kind of, I don't know what it was called, was it the Rezo or something? It was just like a, a kind of square, it's a compact bag. Uh, but that was kind of in the early days. And when I started doing photography, one of the things that I I did a lot of research because when I buy stuff I always research uh, quite a lot on the internet, uh, reviews, magazines, whatever, but mainly online um, to see how the bag performed, how, if it was a good bag, is it a bad bag, what's the bad points about it, good points, whatever. And I essentially got, I actually bought two bags, well I didn't buy two bags, Santa Claus, Mum and Dad. Um, but as a Christmas present, I don't know if did they buy one and somebody bought the other. I can't remember, but my whole plan was uh, check your photography gear that you've got right now at this present moment in time. So it may, it may be like a camera and maybe two lenses, maybe even three lenses. Odds and ends, bits and bobs, chargers, cables, all that kind of stuff. But what I did was I thought like three, three to five years in the, in the future where I was going to be. The reason being is because these bags are actually quite expensive. I mean, they're, they're not cheap. But what you want to do is kind of future-proof your, your bags so that you're, you're actually going to get use out of them. And I've, I've still got these bags. I've had these bags quite a number of years now. So I've got basically two. Uh, they're both... They're both Wopro, which I mean I just think is a really good brand of bags. Uh, would I buy it in any other make? Possibly, but I know for instance that the first camera bag that I bought was a, a Wopro and they were just solid bags. So basically what I've got here is my two bags. Um, now I'll probably get this one first. This is my this is my big one, this is my this is my Vertex 200AW and this was my A to B bag. A to B meaning, uh, say I was going, sometimes I do uh, aviation photography at the airport. So one of the things I could do, just pack this up and practically just fill it, fill a gear. Oh, there's nothing actually in this, my camera gear's in my other bag. Fill it up and you're good to go. Um, and it's got comfortable straps on it as well. It's it's nicely weighted. Nice padded straps. You get the lumbar uh, and the waist supports, and it's really good for just taking quite a bit of weight from A to B. Um, and once you get there, you've got a base operations to use your lenses, whatever you've got. You can put a tripod to the front. I'm not really going to get into like inside the bag. You know, open up all the pouches. It's basically just the kind of the kind of mental side of it, or the kind of what a bag is intended for. So that was just basically A to B, not practical doing photography out and about stuff like that. Let me just close that up. Uh, but an A to B bag where you could fill it. And at that time, I think I had I think I had two bodies, but I had one, and my wife had the camera that's up up, up there. Um, but potentially I wanted enough space to get like, two, maybe even three bodies in here, a big lens, a couple of other lenses, pack stuff in, um, and really just fill it up. So that was my mentality, I had two bags, so that, that was my ATB bag. Get that out of the way, put that over there. And this was my, my kind of running shoot bag. Uh, it's a low pro slingshot. It's a 300 model. 
it's got an all weather case at the bottom, it folds up, same with this, this has got an all weather um, hood that comes out over the whole bag. And this was really meant to wear over your back, slung it round, and obviously you had this portion here like this, and you could access uh, your camera through the, the top part here. And that that worked for probably the first couple of years of my but I was a sensitive photography career, but that worked at the beginning when I used the, the, the straps that were already with the camera. Um, my my brother actually he's a he does well he's into photography. He bought the I think it's a two twenty version of this and I kinda I wouldn't say I wish I'd bought it because this is bigger, I can get more in this. But because it's a single strap, it can get quite quite sore on the shoulder, which is one of the drawbacks of it. But it's not; it doesn't really kill it as such. Um, but it's, it's a decent enough bag. There's your kind of main compartment with all your stuff in there, uh, and it worked. You know, you could take your camera, you go out, do photography, you could carry your second body or a couple of lenses. But you had your access here to take your camera in, put your camera back, and that that worked really well. And what we've got three minutes. So this is probably going to be a, a, maybe two, maybe even three parts. Uh, I just wanted to kind of explain that when you when you when you scout for a bag and you go to buy a bag to basically, so I think ahead. That's for me. That's one of the, the the key things there is don't think about oh let's get a bag for my gear. Just now, think about where you're going to be in three to five years. If you can't really think, well, I don't know where I'm going to be in three to five years. Well, you're probably always going to buy another lens, another two, maybe three lenses, um, slightly bigger, maybe even like a telephoto lens. You might even buy another body. You might buy a couple more batteries. You might buy tripods. You you want it. You, you want a bag that you can put stuff in, put stuff on and carry what your potential can you buy in the future and that way you're, you're buying bags because these bags are not cheap uh, and they're going to last a good number of years so you want it to last, you don't want to buy a bag and then go I can't carry the gear that I need to carry so my advice would be to basically sort of future proof your, your, your purchase and actually think ahead because that way you're actually sort of getting something that you're going to get good use out of um, so that was that was my initial thought and as I say I got these as a Christmas gift quite a number of years back maybe I don't know 2010 2011 maybe say five five six years ago so and I'm still using them I don't use them as much because my, my whole system's changed I'll tell you one uh, the way that I do photography changed and I'll explain that in the next kind of video um, but that was my initial setup, and both bags were, were you know, pretty decent. They, they did a really good job. Um, that's the same here. I always, I always hope I've left money or something. But anyway, guys, that's going to conclude this video. So, part two will be up, and I'll maybe explain why. I still use these bags, but they're not my sort of mainstay because my kind of photography thing changed, and I'll tell you how it changed in the, in the next video. So, Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye.